Hey, how's it going? It's your boy Adam Moriel's Challenger Coach here to bring you a video on how to play mid lane if you're new to the role because quite frankly, I looked around and there weren't any guides on how to actually play a role or just pick it up if you're trying to role swap, anything like that. It's a lot to cover though, so I'm gonna keep it as concise as possible, so let's just get started. For the video outline, this will actually be a two-part video. For part one, it will cover a mid lane overview, fundamentals for all brackets to play, champion pool for low elo and high elo, setups for those champions, map timings, and vision control. Part two, we'll get into the in-game stuff with things like laning, how to deal with junglers, macro flow charts, and also how to team fight. All of this video uses stats from our GPI. You don't really have to follow along with it, but it'll give you a much clearer picture of what you're good at and bad at. First up, let's talk about the lane itself and do a quick overview of what to expect once you become a fully fledged mid laner. Mid lane is the most popular role in the game for a number of reasons, but on a pragmatic level, similar to board games like chess or go, controlling the center of the map is incredibly important on a strategic level, because your sphere of influence is incredibly large compared to the other roles in mid lane is going to be a lot more popular. This does come with the drawback though, because the mid lane now has more responsibilities than the other roles, as the collapse of the mid lane harshly impacts every other teammate, and they will be sure to remind you of this, especially the jungler. One of the positives of maining Min though is that the lane has the biggest flexibility in terms of champion pools, meaning people with any playstyle can be a mid laner. In terms of actual champion archetypes though, all archetypes are seen in the mid lane, even things like tanks. I mean, the most common though are assassin champions who dominate the 1v1, they like to snowball, they like to roam, they like to pick people off, and they use their high mobility and burst damage to achieve a strong early game and are typically very aggressive in the early game but weak in the late game. Then we've got control mages, and they're a caster class with the most powerful AoE abilities and zone control spells that make them incredibly strong team fighters, but tend to be weaker early on and are more passive. And a bit of a subclass of the control mages, or just mages in general, is roamers. These champions tend to not be very strong 1v1, but prefer to extend their influence to the side lanes at a rapid pace to set their teammates up for success, or you know, steal the kills for themselves, either works. Because of all of these aspects, many people consider mid lane to be the role which teaches the most amount of fundamentals compared to any other role in the game. So it's considered the best role to learn the game off of when actually, you know, starting up the first time. Plus you get autofilled the most out of any role, so you tend to be forced to learn more about the game anyways. Now that we know a little bit more about the mid lane, let's go over the fundamental skill sets you'll need at every level of play to be a really good mid laner. First up, let's go over the iron and bronze bracket. Using the gamer performance index or GPI as a staple way to track these fundamentals, you'll want to go around at around a 60 score in skirmishing and team fighting, early game farming at 60 and an average death per game of around four. Though fundamentally, the skills in fighting that you should prioritize will be changed based off the champion they actually play. For example, Zed will want to have a higher pick score than Orianna. Something that will kind of benefit all mid lane champions though at this stage of development is to focus on your ability to fight in a group setting, as this is the most straightforward and common way to win in this particular elo bracket. Although some people might not actually know what their champion is supposed to be good at in terms of their stats, and so if you aren't aware, you can actually just use the comparison tool with your favorite one trick to see what they excel at and then just copy that. After that, farming is also going to be really key in the early stages of mid lane, and personally, I think if you can master any single skill first, it should be this one, but focusing on farming in the early laning phase is the first step, as this is the stage of the game that always happens. Early game will happen every single time. Up in your late game farming doesn't matter if the game doesn't even go late, and it's the one that impacts the solo queue outcome the most. If you can farm during the laning phase, it's the stat that's going to help you one of the most out of any single statistic. As for your survivability score, the most important thing to keep track of is average deaths to around 4, give or take 1 depending on how safe your champion should be. Zed will have a higher deaths on average as he tends to um, quote unquote limit test or be a little bit more aggressive than other champions and he kind of has to to kind of learn his damage. While champions like Orianna are very safe and consistent champions so keeping your deaths on the lower end of that range makes more sense. The reason you're going to do this is just to make sure that you're playing very consistently and they have a good baseline to work off of. Though going below it can often mean you're either playing for KDA or you're smurfing like Dopa but keep in mind these are just general rules alright? They're just guidelines to go off. Some key insights for this particular bracket are in general, the most common mistakes I see from mid laners is people just drop a ton of CS from attempting to roam or just kind of, you know, gank other lanes at wrong times. Focused on last hitting and taking turret plates, you'll find way more victories and more consistent wins off of this type of playstyle, at least early on in your development. You'll really need to practice last hitting in a custom though, until at least it's second nature so you can focus on more important things. I highly recommend practicing CSing in a custom before actually playing ranked games. And if you're one of those people who's like, man, that, that sounds really boring, when do I ever stop doing that? 
kind of never. If you look at sports like basketball or hockey, like you never stop practicing shooting and you never stop practicing, you know, your free throws, or your three pointers. You just keep doing it over and over again. Even professional players like Baker while they're on stage to warm up, just practice last hitting in the practice tool. Next up, let's talk about silver. Here, we're gonna split up your fighting score a little bit more, make it more well-rounded, and then we're gonna up your farming a tiny bit, and then we're gonna add in the beginning of vision control, which is simply the act of just buying a control ward, which I kid you not, I coach people in diamond who buy, I mean, a control ward every five games or something like that. It, it's, it's actually kind of sad. It's just due to people developing very bad habits early on, and most commonly by maining champions like Talon who don't need to, you know, know anything about wave control or vision control to even win games. For key insights for this particular bracket, your farming habits should be on autopilot at this point or very close to it, so you can start working on showing up to things around the map so you can actually start looking at your map more. You can start to see skirmishes happening without dropping CS because your wave control is a little bit better, and you can start looking to roam to other lanes. The biggest thing in this particular bracket in terms of mistakes is just lack of map awareness because they don't have their farming on autopilot. One of the other things that's going to impact your farming in this particular bracket is recalling at the wrong time, so that's something you want to keep track of. You need to start putting in your focus more on the minimap to gain more information rather than always staring at your lane just to last hit. Alright, so in gold here we're going to add in some mid-game farming habits such as catching sideways at the correct time, which coincidentally I just worked on a video for that, so you know, feel free to go check that out if you want to go more in depth into that topic. In terms of key insights, the lack of damage output for solo kill potential is not really there. People don't really do any calculations, they just kind of wing it. Mid laners tend to be very burst or damage oriented champions, and this is the level of play where you have to start knowing all of your damage output and look for those solo kills, look to actually start dominating the laning phase a little bit more. The biggest mistake that I see at this level of play though for mid laners are they're just too passive. They don't go for a lot of kills. I mean, obviously in gold, they're very famous for over chasing during fights, but I mean during the laning phase. People need to start looking and finding their kill windows during the laning phase. Most players are only kind of good at doing one thing in gold. They're either good at farming and they don't really go for kills because they don't know how to balance the two, or they're good at going for kills and can't farm at all. For platinum, we're going to increase all of the basic fundamentals while also working on some of the aggressive metrics like initiative where, you know, you're going to look to cover early tower takes and getting first blood participation or at least first kill participation a little bit more often. You're also going to want to increase that snowball score so that you actually have priority and you're winning in the laning phase. I mean, it's obviously the most important lane to have priority in. Just ask TSM. For key insights for this particular bracket, mid laners are now going to have to start using lane leads to influence the rest of the map. Control mages have to start taking towers faster so that they can actually go to other lanes and start showing up to dragon fights on time. Roamers need to start taking neutral objectives or, you know, any other tower off of Rome's on my like tanning CS. Assassins need to actually start impacting and helping out their junglers in scuttle fights. One of the biggest mistakes I see in this bracket though is people are not identifying game winning situations or they're identifying them at the wrong time. They force random plays and start dying for no reason right before objectives start, trying to make something happen when it's just not going to work, or roaming at the wrong times and just hoping it works. I'm looking at you Katarina players and also platinum mid laners tend to kind of like fall off or lose lane leads and advantages because they just expect people to back them up or they just kind of blindly don't pay attention to the jungler or support roaming to them, they don't have that full awareness on how to push leads yet. Moving on over to Diamond for the key insights, this is when mid laners have to start working with their jungler as a duo. The mid lane is actually a duo lane, it's not a solo lane, you have to get lane priority for the jungler, and especially when they want scuttle, when they want to invade, and you have to be ready to leave that laning phase. You need to start to learn and work with your jungler so that you can be successful. If you're one of those people who always like, man, my jungler sucks every single game, it's probably because you're not allowing them to excel. You're not actually paying attention to what the jungler needs. If the jungler isn't capable of ganking, then obviously begging for ganks isn't going to work. Now, if the jungler is capable of ganking and you're not freezing and burning flashes, then obviously they're not going to show up to your lane, right? In terms of the major mistakes, it's, it's very similar. It's just not paying attention to either jungler. Diamond mid laners tend to, you know, throw leads very similar to platinum mid laners where they get ganked by the jungler, throw their advantage, or they just lose mid priority at the wrong times and don't pay attention to whether their jungler wants to make a play for scuttle or for dragon and they just recall for no reason stuff like that the last after this section we've got masters plus i'm not going to go into full detail on this bracket because we don't have a lot of data on it to back it up it's just very low sample size but i'll just go off of my own experiences and it mostly comes down to people at this point in time have specialized into a certain play style or have maxed out the particular fundamental for their champion pool that they should be excelling at for example mage players have very low deaths maxed out farming and very good team fighting i will 
we'll include on average though what each class of mid lane champion should be good at. For the key insights, we've got control mages should focus up on farming and doing well in team fighting while being consistent with their deaths. Assassin players should focus on their early game fighting stats and snowballing so that they can get picks easier into the mid game and also start to sideline. Roamers should focus on, of course, well, you know, roaming and impacting other lanes and then grabbing neutral objectives ASAP after they get those kills. You need to actually transition those side wave kills into neutral objectives because you tend not to team fight very well, you tend not to scale very well, at least compared to mages. Now that we know what skills you actually need to learn to, you know, be a really good mid laner, let's go over what champions you should look into learning for each archetype of mid laner for both low and high low. I'll define low elo as golden below, and I'll define high elo as diamond two and above. And if you're one of those people stuck in between, you know, just limbo, that's mid elo, and you should look to slowly transition your champion pool into the high elo one. Since most of you will actually just end up playing assassins anyways, I'm gonna start with them. Currently, the list of mid lane assassins kind of goes like this: Akali, Echo, Diana, Fizz, Katarina. Cassidy and Kiana, Talon, Zed, LeBlanc. There are some other sections like things like Pike and Nocturne who are also assassins who can be played mid lane, but they're not native to mid lane. There's also some other like pseudo assassins like Silas, Ari, and Yasuo who aren't technically assassins, but they should be treated as such. This will of course also change over time. For example, both Cossacks and Evelyn were mid laners at one point in time. And I remember this because I made both of them when I hit Challenger for the first time, along with Twist of Fate, of course. Let's go into low elo assassins though. My recommendations would be between Diane Diana, Fizz, and Ari. These are the champions that are good for assassin players to pick up as they are more forgiving and they are somewhat safe while also having easy to execute kill combos. Diana is tanky while being able to start team fights with her ultimate, she farms very well, and she can even split push. She tends to be very strong in the early game but fall off late, but um, not as much as most assassins. Fizz is the champion with absurd mobility, extremely strong 1v1 kill potential, but also falls off late game. He's also extremely hard to kill and has very good gank assist. Ari on the other hand is an extremely versatile track of all trades type of champion but kind of master of none at the moment more of an assassin mage hybrid and she is one of the safest choices out of the three for high low assassins you want to transition into more staple assassin picks that have been there for a while if you want to things like leblanc are very good or you might want to go down the road of maining things like zed or akali that require a little bit more technical ability though my personal recommendation would be leblanc as she has been a go-to pocket assassin pick for an extremely long time most top tier mid laners throughout the history of the game have been picking up LeBlanc, while Zed and Akali tend to kind of weave in and out of the meta depending on how much Riot likes them that week. There are other assassins in Hilo that can be picked of course, but I feel like these are the ones that teach you how to play assassin class the best. Perma roaming with like 30 farm on Talon doesn't really count in my book. For our mages, the roster's gonna look something like this. You got Azir, Anivia, Annie, Lissandra, Lux, Malzahar, Nico, Oriana, Syndra, Vagar, Velkos, Victor, Vlad, Zerath, Ziggs, and Zoe. For the low elo mages, we're gonna go with Annie, Malzahar, and Lux as good beginner champions to pick up. Annie is, of course, extremely easy to last hit, easy burst combo, does have short range, but teaches you very good fundamentals because of it. Malzahar is gonna be a very safe champion due to his passive, easy landing phase, and has very good wave Clear. He's also extremely good in the late game. He has very good team fighting. Lux, on the other hand, is a long range burst champion with good utility. Less carry oriented than the other champions, but very safe. For the high low mage recommendations, you'll want to transition into the big four or the elite four control mages Cassio, Oriana, Victor, and Syndra. And Syndra typically does the best in solo queue out of the four when she's actually strong. Although Zoe, whenever she's meta, is also a very common choice. For roamers, it's a pretty interesting subclass and it includes champions like Talia, Twisted Fate. Galio and Aurelian Soul. Low elo roamers, funny enough, this subset is typically really bad in low elo as the ability to roam at the right times while keeping your CS up is hard, plus they're typically not godly team fighters either. The only one of those four champions that does well in low elo is actually Galio. That's because he's the tankiest of the four and provides the most amount of CC and has the easiest laning phase, making him the most impactful during this bracket. For a high low roamers, Aurelian Soul and Talia are typically considered gimmicks and Riot tends to not like it when they're actually super strong. This means that at the highest level, the most staple high low roamer is actually Twisted Fate and also Galio. Before moving on from this section, I want to make some general statements that'll kind of clarify some things you might have been thinking about. I recommend learning regular mages before assassins for optimal learning of the basics, as assassins tend to be more forgiving when it comes to farming and positioning skills required, while keeping a champion pool of mostly two to three champions. But I mean, you hear this advice all the time and no one follows it, so I don't even know why I bother to say it. Anyway, you'll notice some controversial champions like Ari and Malzahar, for example, who actually have very forgiving kits and truthfully would teach you less basics and fundamentals for mid lane than a champion compared to, I mean, Annie, for example. Not to mention other coaches have even mentioned to stay away from 
them in favor of picking up champions like Orion or Twisted Fate, which I would only recommend going for once you climb to around mid-elo. My personal theory on this matter is, while learning, you actually need to see some progress and see some success to stay motivated. For example, if you're looking to improve, you know, your health or you're looking to, you know, hit the gym or, you know, get that physique you've always wanted, you're going to have to obviously exercise and eat healthy, which is actually not that complicated. Do some simple stuff like 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, 100 squats and go for a jog. Then you're going to want to eat some chicken, rice, veggies like broccoli, and you'll probably see some results. And it's very similar to playing Annie. It's just they both have the same issue. It's incredibly bland to do both those things for most people. Which technically means most people are not suited for that level of grind even if it's considered optimal. This is especially true for a game like League of Legends because the food meta almost never changes. Chicken, broccoli, and rice will probably always be pretty OP in meta. Annie on the other hand might be weak at some point so if you are kind of building up your core knowledge by playing her you won't see results for a long time if she's weak and that'll cause you to not actually feel as motivated or get discouraged because you're not seeing results for a very long time. So my theory is, is you should do something that's slightly less optimal if it's going to keep your motivation significantly higher. The optimal choices for any bracket of play will change over the years, so I highly recommend you stay up to date by following our tier list and choosing S tier champions with lower average difficulty for low elo and S tier champions at any difficulty for high elo. For champion setups, I'm going to very briefly show you the item setups for the champions I just mentioned, and if you want to stay up to date on the current setups or see the item builds for every single champion, feel free to check out our champion pages on our site. For low elo assassins fizz he's gonna go with the proto belt setup it does better than his lich bane setup at least in low elo uh and it gives him a lot better 1v1 in terms of the all-in potential then it's kind of the same thing in terms of low elo the proto belt setup outperforms nashgar's first or roa first so we're going with that one for ari between her glacial setup and her electrocute one the burst electrocute one is way better for snowballing and 1v1 potential and it wins out in low elo you can probably see a pattern here for high elo assassins for leblanc setup she kind of only has one and in terms of item setup I would recommend staying on Oblivion Orb if you don't actually need the healing reduction and going right into Death Cap after that. For low elo mages, uh, one tricks on her are kind of weird with her build, but a staple one is just using Ludens and a normal mage setup, although the Rallys Leandri with Arcane Common is becoming quite popular. For Malzahar, he's got a pretty standard setup. You're going to want to go Rallys, then Leandris. It's statistically better for the most part. And Aerie or Comet is a personal choice, though Aerie is slightly better versus melee champions, and Comet is better versus ranged champions. I know a lot of Lux players in Lola really like taking in Might, but I promise you a defensive summoner is way better. And if someone actually dies to a Lux walking up and ignited them, then you'd probably have beat that person without Ignite eventually anyways if they were that bad. For the high low mages, these four champions normally don't have complicated build paths that vary too often, so I'll just put them on the screen here for you to glance at or pause whenever you need to. As I don't have much to say about them outside of sometimes I'd like to swap out Hexile GLP over Ludens, besides Cassio of course. For low elo roamers, Galio with the Nimbus Cloak is really key on him, as it allows him to more easily make plays since he can't flash W anymore. For High Elo Roamers, Twisted Fate Spellbook is his most popular setup thanks to Dopa and High Elo, although the hybrid Twisted Fate with Trinity Force popularized by Jebsu on EUS is very popular at the moment, so try out which build you like more. The Spellbook one is more consistent, the Trinity Force one is better for snowballing. All right, map timings. Probably haven't seen this before. Here, I'm going to show you a rough spreadsheet on how long it takes to run around the map so you can have a reference for where you're roaming, when you should take your recall timings. It's not exact because different champions have different base movement speed, but it should give you a nice rough estimate. One of the things that you should remember though is that minions take around 25 seconds to reach the middle of mid lane and spawn every 30 seconds. This means that you can refer back to this chart to let yourself know how long you have to return to lane after a roam or a base before you'll start to miss minions in XP. These timings are particularly important for assassin players though, as it lets you more accurately predict when your opponent can be back so you can ambush them. For roamers, it lets you know when you won't drop as much CS when you actually decide to leave lane. For control mages, I guess it helps you know when you can walk back from base and then, um, I mean, instead of having to TP back, but it also lets you know when roaming champions should be back to lane from base and so you can actually ping that they're missing and that they haven't come back yet. Next up, we got Vision. I'm going to do the same thing here for Vision Control so you have a place to refer back to when you need a reminder on where you should place rewards. Warding and Vision tricks on mid lane, I'm also going to kind of give you some tips and tricks here. Tip number one, place a ward in the middle of the lane against roam heavy style champions, like Talon, Twisted Fate for example, so that you can catch what side of the map they rotate to. You don't actually need to know how far down the river they committed, all you need to know is that they went to bot side and they haven't come back yet so you ping. To place this ward properly, you can kind of just line it up at the middle of the torches and this isn't seen by the 
tower. Tip number two, placing a trick and ward in the side brush can be pretty dangerous as it doesn't cover jungle gangs very well. Better to place it slightly outside of the brush so it covers the back wall. Tip number three, this is one that I use that I barely ever see people take full advantage of, but this corner right here, if you hug the torch, it's not seen by tower. This is extremely useful when there's no minion wave around and you want to go in the enemy jungle unseen as it's very unlikely they have that entrance covered with the ward. And also it will allow you to get kind of free side lane rooms or invade the enemy jungle. Tip number four, though I just mentioned placing a trinket ward in that side brush isn't a great placement, placing a control ward in there is an amazing spot for pick champions to set up kills from. If you just place a trinket ward over the wall with a control ward inside that brush, you can very easily pop over, get that pick going. Tip number five, for trinket usage, generally speaking, you've messed up if you notice you have two trinket wards available. As for control wards, the general rule is you want to have one out on the map at all times. And if it keeps dying, then you're like, wow, I shouldn't buy these. They just die all the time. I'm wasting money. It's likely because you haven't put it in the right place because you can't even defend it. Tip number six, in terms of ward timings early on, you can't have two choices. The first is warding the enemy raptor camp 10 seconds before it spawns, and it currently spawns at 1.30. This will allow you to track the enemy jungler pathing, and it's especially good for versus level two ganking junglers or junglers who like to cheese. The other timing is around 2.45 or roughly 30 seconds before it scuttle spawns. This will help you block the first gank while also telling you which side of the map the enemy jungler is on as they pretty much always go for scuttle around this time. Tip number seven, you always wanna place control wards in a place that you can defend them and use them as a foothold for vision while trinket wards can be placed more aggressively in terms of, you know, deep wards, putting them on the camps, things like that. Tip number eight, if you're looking to place deep wards or wards in the river or place your control wards, one of the best timings to do it is right as you come back from lane because they won't see you place them or after you push your wave into the tower. So once again, people won't see you doing it and you're not wasting time or CS while actually trying to place wards. I absolutely hate seeing people go ward and miss like a cannon for it. It's very sad to see. As is tradition, let's do a TLDR because this was a pretty long guide and it's only part one, so let's get on with it. Mid lane is the most popular rule and is very important strategically because it's in the center and it's very similar to games like Chess or Go. Unlocking the center unlocks the rest of the map. It's a very flexible role though, it has many styles of champions or players can play in it. Pretty much anyone who has any style of player can go mid lane, although the most common choices are assassins, mages, and roamers. It is considered the best role to learn fundamentals, and for mid lane, those fundamentals are farming, team fighting, low deaths, and vision control for mages. For assassins, it's pick, skirmishing, ganking, initiative, mid game farming, vision denial, dueling, and snowballing. For roamers, which is a subclass of mages, it's picks, skirmishing, ganking, fight participation, low dueling, good initiative, and neutral objective control. For low elo assassins, the best choices are Diana, Fizz, and Ari. Here are their builds. For a high elo, it's LeBlanc, and depending on the metas that are a Kali, here's the LeBlanc build. Low elo mages, we've got Annie Lux and Malzahar, once again, check out the build. High elo, we got the Elite Four, Victor, Syndra, Cassio, Ori, and uh, once again, here are the builds. Low elo roamers, boom, we got Galio, here's the build. High elo roamers, Twisted Fate, Aurelian Soul, and Talia, depending on the meta, but here's the TF build. All of these are subject to change, so keep up with the tier list or champion pages to stay up to date on current meta and current setup. You got your map timing on the spreadsheet here. For the vision control, here's an image to help you know where to ward. That's it, that's all I got. That's my ultimate guide on how to play mid lane part one. I really didn't have all the references to go off in the community, so let me know if I covered everything you wanted to know about in, you know, in enough detail where you thought it was useful, and if you like this kind of video and want me to do it for the other roles, and also stay tuned for part two. It's a lot juicier in terms of the content, so look forward to that one. As always, go check out our other content on this YouTube channel, as well as at mobilex.gg. I'm Adam Moriarty Isles. See you next time, or whenever I decide to stream again, which should be at the end of the month, not sure.